So this morning I was laying in bed and I could hear this roar just continual. And I was like, that sounds like a lot of water. Well, we've been getting a lot of rain here in Southern Missouri for the past 24 hours. And I peek out the window and I look out back and I can see our little water back here, like the little dry creek that runs down. And it had some water going to it. And I was like, well, that surely isn't where all the sound's coming from. And I walk to the front of the house and here's what I see. So if you watched our build of this cabin last spring, you seen me shoot some of our uh, spring and it running because we had, we had quite a bit of rain last year whenever we were building the cabin. But I never seen it like this. I mean, it is thumping. It is pumping out some water right now. I could definitely be uh, producing some hydroelectricity right now if it was working. So I'm gonna bring you down and show you guys the dam because it's, uh, it's got a lot of water in it. Make a guess. She's to the max, obviously. I mean, it's a pouring over right now. So it's up so high, it's also a little bit, a little bit is starting to come around and wash around here. I'm going to remove some of this dirt, maybe relieve a little bit of pressure, and let a water come, let a lot of water start flying out of the flume. That'll help relieve some of this water a little bit faster, and not have so much built up over the dam. So over there is the dam, the water wheel. This is where I had the uh, other pipe that was coming out that I was gonna build a pond over here. So here's this other dry creek that I've got. There is a spring up there, but it produces very minimal amount of water. And when it reaches this point, it, it's pretty much underground anyway. But it's rolling pretty good too. So I'll show you where these two meet. Actually, I got, I got three little dry creeks. I, I got the spring and then two little dry creeks. And there's a spot down here where they all meet up together and there's a little waterfall. And I bet it's really pretty today. Let's go down and look at it. So here's water coming from the spring. And this got some current to it. So I crossed the fence. I'm on government land now. And here's this other dry creek. And they're all just about, I don't know, not very far. I mean, and here's the government dry creek. I don't know where those pipes are. On this side of them is my spring water, and then on the other side of them is 
that other dry creek that's on my property. So here's our little waterfall. This actually isn't on our piece of property. This is on the government land. But my, my fence is pretty much right there where these down trees are up here. And then there's uh, the land or the water continuing on across the government land. And it goes, it stays on the government land for the remaining journey until it reaches a much larger creek or river, however you want to call it. And that's probably about a mile away. The water is running everywhere it can today. It's everywhere. Lots and lots of water. It's pretty. I love it being down here. Love being at a place where you just have access to lots of water and there's just springtime and you get lots of rain. The other thing about the Ozarks that I love is, you know, we get, I think, 46 inches, 48 inches of rain annually. However, I would say that's historically, but I would say in the last 10 years, you might add 10 inches to that, and that's probably more accurate. Gus and I are kind of having a hard time. We're trying to figure out how deep this is. That's pretty deep, ain't it, buddy? We're wanting to cross, but I don't want to get it over my muck boots. Actually, I'm sorry. These aren't mucks anymore. I traded dry shod. So right here's the point where my dry creek and my spring water come into play. Right in here, I'd love to get this area cleaned up some more and make this uh, a sitting area. I don't know, if somebody has some ideas, shoot them at me of what, what I could do in this little spot. It's just a little peninsula between the two waters and I'd like to do something here, but I gotta get it cleaned up first. But if you have any ideas on what I could do here, let me know. I'm back up here at the water wheel and dam now. Since I opened the flume, I've noticed that the water level has dropped on the dam, which is good. Uh, what concerns me is, get because we're supposed to get more rain, like I, I looked at the radar, and we, it's supposed to rain all day today, it's supposed to rain tomorrow, so I would say a possibility of another two or three inches is very likely. I don't want it filling up so much that it's going over the top of the dam. So I'm a little bit concerned about that. Right now my goal is to get it lowered as quickly as I can. It is dropping, I would say, since I pulled the flume and walked down there and showed you guys the other parts of the creek. I'd say it's probably dropped an inch. I'm gonna go over to the other side and see if it's still kind of coming around. Grady came to tell me my coffee, coffee water was whistling at me. So I gotta get my coffee made. So that's something that uh, I've really gotta figure out. Maybe a better solution, but we are pulling our water for the cabin from the spring. I've got a pump inside the spring head, which right now is a brown murky mess. So I know if we try to pull water, right now the water in the tank's fresh and clear, but the more we use that water, it's gonna pull this brown murky water into it. So I don't, I don't know. I don't have no solutions for that yet. So anyway, we'll see how that goes. A lot of water, huh? I mean, all this debris was up on top because, I mean, the water had come all the way up to this edge, which Jerry had this idea after we built the dam. He said, you know, you might want to go get you some blocks, but you can see our dam. And then we put another uh, concrete block up on top of that. I don't know, I think those are maybe four inches. And so we laid that across the top to give it a, bit, a little bit more height. And I'm glad it did, because we needed it. Otherwise, all this rain would have been spilling over the top, all the way across here. It has gone down some more. I don't have uh, the water running around like I did, so that's good. Yeah, I can tell just by this area right here. I wish this wasn't happening, because I know it's washing out that right there. 
but it's not as severe as what it was when I first pulled it. The water wheel's not spinning as fast as what it was when Jerry first installed it. It's definitely not going as fast. Could be those bearings. Somebody did tell me, you know, you're gonna have a lot of maintenance with trying to produce electricity from the water wheel or, or wagon wheel like this. So it's been a few weeks now since I shot the video of the clips that you guys just seen. And yeah, we had a ton of water, a lot of water over that period of time. Since then, things have kind of gotten back to normal. Is the dam still here? Did it break? Did you lose all your water? No, we didn't. So some of you may have been asking yourself or wondering, is our dam safe? Because I've had people leave comments in previous videos telling me that we did not construct our dam right, that we did not use enough rebar, so on and so on. As you know, everybody is an expert when they're watching somebody else's life and everybody's got an opinion on how you can do things better. And don't get me wrong, I love when people give us opinions or their advice if it's helpful advice. I don't like people being rude and I have a one strike rule for my YouTube channel and that is if you are rude or say anything hateful about me or my family, you're immediately blocked from our channel to where you can no longer leave comments ever again. I don't have time to mess with replying back to stupidity, so I just don't. So, about our dam. Now listen, Jerry, as you guys know, Jerry was the builder of our cabin and our dam. Jerry has been in construction and building things his entire life. He also built our water wheel, and many of you sang Jerry's praises when it came to his ideas and his just know-how on how to do things. When it comes to our dam, I completely believe we did it correctly because I put my trust in what Jerry knows how to do things. So a couple of things I just want to point out to you guys. Some, some people had this misconception that we didn't use enough rebar. Trust me, we, we put a lot of rebar in there. Maybe I didn't show it in the clips, but I put enough rebar in there. Jerry wouldn't have let us build this dam if I didn't have enough rebar in it. We used plenty of rebar. We also went deep enough into the ground on our footings whenever we did it. We also used the proper consistency of concrete. Jerry made sure of that whenever we were pouring the dam. So let's move on from that. Somebody also said that when you're building a dam, you don't need to build it in a straight line. And we didn't. I'm gonna show you an aerial clip right now. Okay, scratch the drone idea. I could not find my SD card for my drone. It's a little frustrating. So I'm just gonna show you guys from this angle. So you can see our dam is not in a straight line. You can see it's it's at an angle, then it comes this way, there's a bend right here, and then it comes this way in a somewhat straight line, and then has another angle. So, not in a straight line, folks, not in a straight line. So, let's drop that as well. As far as thickness of our dam, we used eight inch walls on the sides, and here in the middle, we used 10 inch walls. The other thing that I wanna point out is just our dam size. This is about the size of a very small pond. It is, I haven't like measured it, but it's not big. And also, it's not very tall. I'm about six foot tall. I don't have my rubber boots on right now, so I'm not gonna get down in the water. But even at right here, it's probably a little over four foot right here at this spot where I'm standing. So it's not holding a ton of water. Some of you have been so concerned about if the dam broke, and the people below me. There's a lot of people back there. As I mentioned in this video, from my property to where this goes to another creek is all government land. There is no houses between here and there at all. None whatsoever. So we can drop that as well. I can tell you what my biggest concern for safety with our dam is the trees, mainly because I didn't realize that whenever we were building the dam that I was gonna have so many trees that were in the water, especially this great big white oak. Now it is leaning that way. It's not leaning towards the dam, but I do have other trees around the dam. So that's to me a bigger concern is let's say a windstorm comes through or these trees die and eventually will fall. But my plan is with that, is I'm going to drain our pond at some point 
and then I'm gonna have these trees cut and removed so that I don't have to worry, not all the trees, but at least some of the ones I'm more concerned about so that we don't ever have to worry about an accident happening like that if falling on the dam. So since we had that heavy rain, we haven't had really any heavy rain like that again. That was, a, that was the only time so far this spring where the dam has filled up quite like that. Now I could add some more block on the wall, which might be a possibility to give me more height. Something I did not think about was my six inch pipe. If I could have gotten to it, which I'm not sure if I could have that day, but if I could have gotten to it or had some sort of a valve on there that I could manually open it a little bit easier, I could have opened that, I let some of the water drain out that way. Jump across this. Okay, something else I wanted to show you guys. In the video, I had a lot of water coming down right here. What happened was, was it was in this position like that. And so the water was hitting it and just knocking it over. But what I ended up doing was I had my flume board pulled, I laid it across here, and then I put it back into this position. And when I did that, it kind of opened the channel a little bit more to allow more water to flow through without hitting it. And that stopped it spilling down there. And while I'm here at the water wheel, really quickly, I'm just gonna let you guys know kind of what's going on with that. Still haven't been messing with it at all. I have been talking to Spencer at Langston Alternative Power. He's in South Carolina, and we've been trying to come up with a solution uh, for me to produce hydroelectricity another way. So stay tuned for that. I'm not quite sure exactly what it's gonna be yet, but we're gonna come up with another thing instead of using the water wheel. The water wheel's not out of the question yet. It's just that I'm gonna be doing something else right now that I think would be better and more efficient than the water wheel. So guys, thanks for checking out today's video. I appreciate you guys always stopping by and, and see what's going on here at an off-grid cabin called the Moon Shack. And now that I've addressed some of the safety concerns with our dam, hopefully we can uh, move on to more important things. Thanks guys, have a wonderful day and God bless.